Hello, welcome to the next episode of Ask Amy Astro. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe below and select the alert bell to let you know when I upload a new video. Like and share with your Astro friends and follow me on Facebook as Amy Astro. I was recently asked how do I plan an image session and I'm getting ready to drive to a star party and thought this was a good time to show you. So let's get started. Hi everyone. This week I am getting ready to go to a star party. And it's a star party that's sponsored by the Atlanta Astronomy Club and it's going to be at the Deer Lake Astronomy Village. And I'm really excited about going. I look forward to this all year long. Now this year, this is what I have to look forward to. There is a tropical storm hanging out there and it is going to dump rain on me most of the week. So this is going to be interesting. And right now it looks like Wednesday night is about my only night that I'll be able to do some imaging. But we have some guest speakers and some uh, door prizes and such. And, and really it's just great fun to get together with other astronomers and uh, see what they have and talk out new ideas with them. So I'm going to head out there anyways. But what I wanted to show you is how I go about planning my uh, what I'm going to image. Now since I'm limited to just one night, I've really just got to stick with one target. So I'm here on my Mac desktop and my telescope rig is running over in my office and I'm using the remote desktop protocol for Mac that will allow me to use Wi-Fi to get over to the office. So let's open up the computer on the telescope. Alright, so now we have remoted into the telescope and this is my desktop background so I know when I can get over to it and I call my scope the Raven. Alright, so what I need to do first is find a target. So let's open up Stellarium and see what we've got going on. Alright, we need to come over here to the date and time window and let's bump the date to Wednesday. So if this is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Okay, so let's change the time to sometime in the evening. There's 7 o'clock. Let's go to 8 o'clock. There we go. Let's go to 9. That's good enough to work with. All right, let's scroll down here and find the ground. Now, what I want to do is I want to find a target that I can't normally reach in my backyard and also knowing that I'm going to a dark space. So if I come over here to my north, I know I have a tree blocking most of my north view. I can get Polaris, but usually about right here to right here, I can't reach. So something in this region would be really cool. And let's see, also what I don't get to see is over here towards the southeast, starting about, let's see, this is 20 degrees, here's about 35 degrees. So starting in about this area, all the way through the south, let's see, I'm in the south now, to southwest. I've got a large chunk of sky that I can't normally see. So I miss all of this cool stuff this over the summer, mostly because of rain, so it prevented me from going to my dark space, but I just wasn't able to get anything. But I've got two targets that I researched over the last month, and usually when I look for targets, you know, I'm still getting acquainted with the night sky, I go and I look at other people's images. I follow folks on Facebook, I look at YouTube, I look at uh, Astrobin, and I get ideas of images that look cool, and then I go hunt for them on Stellarium to see where they actually are. So let's go over here and let's find one of these objects. I have been looking at, well, Pallades is obvious because I can only get that for about two hours a night, so that would be a given, a good target. Um, Orion is another target for me that I can't get in my yard. Let's see. The iris 
Nebula. Now I definitely can't get that one. It's too close to that northern tree that I've got. So let's see if we can find that one. There it is, the Iris Nebula. And search. And where is that one located right now? There he is, zoomed in. Okay, he's right here. And I'm pretty sure that is not in my yard. Let's, yeah, in the north, I would never be able to get that one in my yard. So that would be a really cool target to get to. Let's zoom in on him some. It'd be nice if I could actually see what it looks like, but I don't. But this is one, he just spins around in this area and it never sets. So the iris would be a, a great target for me to think about. All right, let's zoom out some. I'm just using the wheel on my mouse to zoom in and out. And I have to be patient because I am running over Wi-Fi. So there will be some lag here. Just nothing I can do about that. But let's come over here. And a lot of times I just sit there and zoom in and zoom out. And I look for color clusters or I've got these little cheats here that tells me that there's little galaxies and stuff going on. But I'm a nebula person. I like bright colors. So let's see. I don't think it's risen yet. Don't see it, but let's go ahead and give another search. Nope, not that one. Don't want that one. We want search. I forgive all these pixels that are just flying through. Let's look up Pallades. Hey, P.O. This is part of that lag going on here. Where are you sitting right now? You're just on the horizon at about nine o'clock. But nine o'clock is really probably too early for me. Let's see, I'm popping over to my phone here. I wish I could show it to you. But I'm not quite sure how to show you what I'm doing on my telephone, but I have a, an iPhone and there is this app that's called Dawn to Dusk. It's free and it tells me when is the astronomical sunset so I know when I can actually start my imaging. Now let's see, it's freezing up right now naturally. It's got to update to my location. For some reason, it seems to think I am over in Africa. Pretty sure I am not in Africa, but that's okay. There we go. We have some astronomical sunset for our Wednesday evening is actually quite early, 8.15. So I could start imaging by 8.30. That would be fantastic, but I don't think I've got any targets that I can reach. Let's see. Well, I do have the soul. The heart, I know for a fact, is way too big for my image train to handle. And that's even with a 0.8 reducer. So let's see. What else do we get? So I'd have to wait for Pallades to get up. Goodness. The tree line where I'm at is at about 20 degrees. But I'm going to have a lot of glow over here from the nearby city. So I would be better off waiting until it was up here at about 30 degrees. So let's fast forward the time really quickly. Oops, that was too quick. Where is it? Let's see if he stayed. Ooh, wonder what that guy is. There he is, he's way up there. So, one eight, yeah. That went crazy fast. Let's back up some. A little faster than that. right now we're at 1 a.m. We know we'll see it by 1 a.m. Oh, that's something over here by Orion. Just by having the name Cosmic Bat Nebula, it's going to catch my eye. Well, let's speed up just a little more. All right. Well, definitely by 11 o'clock, I'd be able to image that. But let's go over here. Where'd it go? Where's Orion? There's Orion. 
What is this guy? Let's zoom in on him and see what he is. He looks pretty big. Oh, it's the Witch Head Nebula. I have always wanted to image that one. Let's write that one down. NGC 1909, because I would never get that in my yard. So that would be fun to do later on in the night. And actually, I've been working on some other images that I could go back and get the luminance filter for until these have risen up enough for me to capture. All right, so we've got a couple ideas here. Let's minimize the Stellarium and go over to our Sequence Generator Pro. And I plan all of my images using their Mosaic tool. So it's under Tools. And let's go to Framing and Mosaic. And first I want to go here under Profile, and I want to grab the profile that I'll be imaging with, which is going to be my Explore Scientific 102, my ZWO ASI 1600 monochrome camera, my night crawler so I can rotate things with, and I'm going to go ahead and put the 0.8 reducer in here for now. And I can always change it to one of these profiles without a reducer if I find that the image is just way too small. So make sure I check that. And in this object box, that's where I'm going to start typing. Now I got a 50-50 chance that they're going to come up on the first try. Uh, one of the things is I did find out you need to be on the internet for this to work. So let's type in NGC 1909 for the witch's head. And I'm going to do a field of view of four. And that should give me some space around my target so I can adjust everything. Now my profile, when I set it up, it automatically told you what my camera scale was, what my camera pixels were, and if I was going to do a mosaic of multiple images, I'm going to have a 15% overlap. But for right now, let's hit Fetch, and it is going to go looking for this target. <coughs> Alright, the target is up, and it looks fantastic. One of the first things I like to do is over here at the histogram is I try to darken it up because sometimes it just comes in way too bright and I can't see what's going on. Okay, now I can see it. And just take your mouse and drag yourself a little box. And automatically it drew two boxes here. That's thinking I'm wanting to do a mosaic. Let's drop this down to one box by one. Dang. This target is too big for my camera and telescope combo, so I would have to do a mosaic. Now knowing that I've only got one night to image, a mosaic is not the smartest thing for me to try to do. So I'm gonna have to remember this target for another time. So let's write a note here. Do that one another day. Okay, so that's no big deal. Let's find another target. Well, we do know there's Pleiades out there. How big is Pleiades on my screen? Let's go fetch it. All right, there's Pleiades. It's really bright. Let's take our histogram and darken it up some so we can just see what's going on here. I really have to darken it up to... There we go. All right, let's create ourselves a box. Now that's pretty good. That fits in my frame rather nicely. Now what's really cool about this is since I have a rotator, or even if you didn't have a rotator and manually rotated your camera, you can sit here with this rotation selection option and you can rotate the image around and position this in any angle you like. I kind of like that. This is the Seven Sisters. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. All right. We can say those are six and seven, but truly, I don't know. I am not an astronomer. I'm a photographer. But you know what? By the time I'm done imaging this, I will know which of these are truly the seven sisters. This looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and create my sequence. And let's give the sequence a name. Let's give it a capital P there. Oh, ladies. And... I'm going to append targets to my current sequence. Right now I have nothing in my sequence, so that's okay. 
I'm going to use precision centering with plate solving and I'm going to associate this image with my sequence. So let's say OK. And right now it's creating my target and one has successfully been created. So let's see, let's go over here. I have one target, it is Pallades, and I can come through here and plan how many images of everything that I want to take. Well, let's have a plan B. What if that side of the sky doesn't look that great or I'm just don't feeling like waiting so much? Let's go back to tools and we'll go back to framing and mosaic and let's put a second one in here. Let's go back to the, um, the iris nebula. Let's see if it'll pull it up under iris nebula. If not, then I'm going to have to look up the NGC number for it. Which is what? NGC 7023, or also known as Caldwell number 4. Alright, there it is. Screen's really bright again. Let's move this out of my way a little bit. Take our histogram and let's darken it up so we can see it. Look at that tiny guy. All right, let's draw a box. Now he is really tiny in my screen. Now if I wanted, I could take my 0.8 reducer out of my train and just put my regular field flattener in. But if I do that, that affects Pallades now. So I need to make a, a judgment call. Do I want a chance to have both images? which we know I'll only be able to do one in that night, but it's probably safer if I have an option. Sometimes you guide better in one area of the sky versus the other. You just never really know until you get there. So I think I'm going to leave this right like this. That looks like it's all dark nebula here. Let's darken it up some more and just see what else do we see. I see some darkening over here. That looks like it might be the core of it not real sure and I can always see does it look even better at a rotation sky is really the limit here you make this look however you want it to look in your picture you're the one that's printing this out it's going to be on your wall it needs to be pleasing for you so I'm going to leave it like that and I'm going to say create my sequence let's Give it a capital I for Iris Nebula, and we're going to say OK. So now I have two targets as a possibility to image. Now I don't have internet service when I'm out at my star party, so I need to make sure I have everything that I may or may not want to do already pre-programmed in here. Let's delete that blank target. <clears throat> So let's have a, another option here that I was looking up. Let's turn that off, go back to tools. Let's go to framing and mosaic. Now out here at this star field, I have a 360 degree view. So I can really shoot anywhere I want and it is a pretty good dark space. So let's see if this will work. SH2-54. Not sure if that'll work so good or not. Let's lower our uh, our field of view a little bit. I'm not sure how big this target is. It's called the Gum Nebula. Sometimes, if you have a smaller field of view, when it's hunting for things, it tends to be a little bit quicker. Wow, that looks like a really big target, actually. Let's lower this histogram down. Really quite interesting. Let's create ourselves a window. Notice because my field of view is smaller, it made my window look larger. You know, it's just a little optical deception here. That would make a really cool image. He's got a lot going on. I really, I wouldn't mind doing a mosaic of it, but again, I don't have time. So let's just see if I can get as much of this stuff in here as possible. I really like these little dripping sections and the veins and there's a really bright core in here. I want to see what's on the outside. Let's bump this field of view 
back up to four and let's fetch it again. This will help me get a better idea of how I want to rotate my image. Alright, there it is. It's showing a bit more. Oh goodness, there's something really cool over there. <clears throat> what is over there? Let's go back to Stellarium. And let's find our search. And let's type in SH2-54. Can you find him? Oh, he's way down there. This is, what time? 11 o'clock at night. Oh, okay, let's fast forward some time a bit. Oh, it's in the west. It's setting. So he is not even an option for me. I bet you he's over there by the eagle. Let's go backwards in time. Oh yeah, he's in the west, he's setting, he is done for the season. I will have to remember that for next time. So there's no point in making that target. What else do we have? I've got M17 on my list, Omega Nebula, Nebula the Swan. Oh, he's searching. Yeah, maybe I should come over here and take a peek at where it's at. M17. Well, goodness, everything I want's in the West, and it has set. But, you know, these are generally the pains that you go through. You see somebody else's image, they're really cool, and you realize that they took that image months ago. And just like me, they've got a backlog of processing. All right. Well, I do know who's up. <clears throat> well, the heart's too big. The soul's probably too big also. Well, let's just check it out. An error fetching. You couldn't find it? Well, let's go find out what's he called. Zip on over here. Come on. Patience is something I don't always have. Well, there's some cool stuff coming up over there, too. I say cool because it's big. It looks like it might have some color. So it might have some interest for me. Let's zoom out some. Is that, where's Cassiopeia? Capella. That's all the way. There it is. It's also known as IC1848. I see 1848. If it doesn't one know one name, I bet you it knows another. But sometimes it's always quite handy to have down all of the names of these objects. Not just the common name that we know, but the NGC name, the IC name. Um, Caldwell doesn't seem to work very well with this one. I'm not sure why. All right, there is the soul. Well, it's kind of big for my uh, my stuff here. Will a rotation help me squeeze them all in there? Well, I could squeeze it. Thank God for the reducer, huh? I do risk losing everything that's on the outside, knowing that I'm working with filters, and there'll be some aligning between things and some dithering. 
we could call this a last ditch option. There's nothing else for me to grab. I bet you there's something really cool in here that I could always zoom in and grab. Let's just make it, have it on standby. I'd rather have too many targets than not enough and be out there in the middle of nowhere and have no internet and cell service and not have a target. So I've got the ladies I know I can get, the iris I can definitely get that all night. I see 1848. Well, let's go ahead, if there's clouds at the very beginning of the night and I have to wait a couple hours, there is always the Orion Nebula. I can only get that for about two hours in my yard, so that's always a good target to grab. There it is in all its glory. Let's darken this up some. So what do we got? We've got the Orion Nebula here. We've got the Running Man. Don't you just love these names? All right. And that's what my camera can capture. I can get that much of him. Or I can rotate it and probably get a little bit of both. So let's see what rotation gets us. And that way I feel like he's upside down, but that's just me. Let's rotate him all the way around. That actually fits rather nicely. I'd love it if I could get that target. Let's darken this up just a little bit more. Make sure. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay. Create our sequence. Give him a capital O. Okay. There we go. So here we've got, I have the option to take Pallades, the Iris Nebula, uh, the Soul, I see 1848, and the Orion Nebula. And this should really cover me good. And also during the week, I'm gonna listen to other folks talking and I'm gonna see what targets they're going after because I am almost positive that they know of other targets out there that I haven't even dreamed of yet. So this is how I go about creating my astro plan. I use a combination of Stellarium and the Framingo Mosaic in Sequence Generator Pro. I also use some apps on my telephone to help me find out when the astronomical uh, sunset is. And that's called the, dawn and the Dusk and Dawn app. It was free. And another app that I like on my phone is called Sky Guide. And these are Apple apps. And it's a wonderful app. It gives me all, you know, it, I can say what time it is, what day it is. I can put in my target or I can just look for targets, select my target. It tells me when it rises, when it sets, when it's going to hit the meridian, all kinds of useful stuff. So this is all I have for right now. This is just me coming up with a plan and setting up my sequence generator. I'm getting ready to finish packing up my bags and I'm going to head out to my star field. So this is Amy of Amy Astro, and I am wishing you all some very clear skies, and you all wish me some good luck to capture some stars this week. Take care, y'all. Bye-bye.